I actually I graduated from Northwestern University, so it's very nice for me to come back to Chicago. It's been uh, qu quite a long time. It's, uh, it's been so long, in fact, that uh, not only was the, uh, do we not have a black president, we had not had a black mayor at that point. So, uh, and a lot has changed here. Uh, I noticed coming in, there's now public transportation from the airport. Um, no more driving through Skokie to get the bagels on the way to home. Um, and uh, this, the skyline has trebled, um, at least, since uh, in the last three decades. Um, and other, um, in those three decades, a lot of things have changed in architecture, and a lot of things have changed in architectural photography. Um, and the common denominator that was, that was forced that, that, that seismic shift in both these fields is the uh, tabletop computer, uh, which has enabled architects now to uh, create hyper-realistic renderings of spaces that don't even exist. Um, even I can't tell the difference between a rendering and a photo often, um, no joke. Um, so let me find where I was. Uh, okay, so for the great technical challenge for, architect for the architectural photographer in the age of film was to properly expose for both the outside and the inside at the same time. The contrast was simply too great for film's limitations. The solution was invariably, inevitably, to supplement the light of the room with artificial light. Uh, um, the introduction of, of lighting like this alters the feel and the personality inherent to that space. And while it sometimes could make a beautiful picture, it was an imposition of artifice that did not transmit the true feeling and spirit of spaces. What digital photography enables the photographer to do is make separate exposures for the outside for the highlight details in the room, for the shadow area of the room, and then to take these exposures and in the miracle of Photoshop, to merge them back together. So what you, what you end up with is a, a, an image that we can see outside and, the, and, the, and there is no artificial light supplementing the room. So all the light that you see in the room has a, the logical motivation of actually coming from that window that you see or coming from that lamp that you see, and which is, very closely approximates the experience of standing in the room and seeing a room. Uh, and th this is the, 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 the big thing now, uh, is why the, re the realism, the, and, and I want to get into what, you know, what the differentiation is and, and how we're forced because of uh, what rendering has done, uh, CGI and CAD has done, and pushed the, 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 the architectural photography in another direction. The great paradox of, the, of digital photography is, is rather than leading me down a path of virtual worlds rendered in CAD or CGI, it's in fact a return to old world arts, painting and drawing. And this is my, my background. Um, when I go back into the studio after shooting a project and I work on my files, I bring up a palette, I size a canvas, I select my brushes, I draw paths, I draw lines with pencils. Um, I create layer upon layer of varying opacities of color, contrast, saturation, and I build the image up that way. Uh, and if this sounds more like Roy Lichtenstein's studio than Richard Avedon's, uh, it, it really is. I'm, I'm, it's really more painting now, even though it's a photograph, uh, it, it's being reassembled, all the, pix the pixels of the paint and the screen is, is the canvas. Um, so as, as, as we go, you'll see, I, I think, that there, there's a, a painterliness to them uh, and certainly a natural flow of, of, of the light. So in this time, when an architect can inexpensively create realistic renderings of space that may or may not exist, how has the role and responsibility of the architectural photographer changed? It's no longer enough to accurately document a building's form or show its context or explain its program. The arch architect can do that without me. Um, and we all know that a building is much more than those things, than the sum of those parts. What is a building? 
It's the air. The air it holds. It's the people it serves. The way it ages. The landscape going, growing around it. The ever-changing quality of the light it absorbs and reflects. The stray reflection. The window condensation. The frost receding from the ground as the sun rises. The eclectic fashion of passerbys. These are the holy grail in modern architectural photography. It's only through digital capture and processing that they can be properly explored and expressed. I've heard architecture referred to as the mother art. Building, buildings, monuments, and cities are the penultimate symbols of virtually every civilization that has walked the earth. They reflect the synthesis of each civilization's religions, politics, economics, and art. They are the most enduring vestiges of a culture, often outlasting even the languages of the time they were erected in. Pyramids, temples, theaters, bazaars, museums, destinations for tourists and scholars. For those unable to make that pilgrimage, these great architectural symbols can only be experienced through photography. How many of us have ever had the opportunity to stand in front of the Taj Mahal, or to sit in the Oval Office, or to walk down a street in Pompeii? Yet, we feel we know these spaces almost as well as we know our homes, only through the photographs. So if architecture is the mother art, and I do include uh, landscape architecture with that, to me they're inseparable, uh, the reality is, for the most part, they're experienced only through photography. So the photographer's role is, uh, uh, is, a, is critical to how, to how this great art is experienced. Architecture exists to be experienced in the flesh, in space, in real time, not in books and magazines. It is the responsibility of the architectural photographer to translate as many of the senses of the th real three-dimensional experience of architecture to the virtual two-dimensional world of screens and paper. Uh, I'm going to digress into a personal story. I, I, come, I come from a background of drawing and painting, as I mentioned. I, I spent much of my childhood copying Picasso's. Uh, I was no doubt attracted to his paintings because, like, like his models, um, I also had very unusual eyes. Um, when I was three, I lost part of my thumb in an accident, and my right eye turned uh, away to the left, and I stopped using it altogether. Um, and uh, I, I entered a... I became stereo vision blind, this is what they, they, they call it. Um, um, however, if I closed my left eye, uh, my right eye would work. Uh, and so when I, uh, I was just a boy and I lived in a, a raucous family, post-Holocaust family, uh, and uh, so I would sit quietly at the edge of the table and uh, I would uh, uh, align the, the pepper and the ketchup and I would uh, hide, the, hide the, the, these, uh, pepper shaker behind the ketchup, and I would close my, my, good eye, my left eye, and the pepper shaker would explode out from behind the ketchup. And I, uh, <laughs> I did this millions of times. Uh, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, so wh what, what I was doing was uh, uh, I could no longer see depth, but I was learning depth. I taught myself depth. Um, and because I learned depth, I became perfectly equipped to uh, express it in, in, in my art. Um, and uh, the, the reason I want to say that is um, because the, the, this idea, and here we are here in Ideas Week, is uh, that you know, this perceived weakness is, or this difference between my, the way I see and most people see uh, became, became my great strength. And uh, I think it's important that uh, to identify within yourselves whatever your, your not necessarily weakness, but your, your unusualness is. And uh, because there's always going to be someone that's smarter or faster or quicker or richer or better connected or, or even more talented than you, but they're not, they don't have the, the same DNA and they don't have the same scars and they don't have the same blessings. And that's what you want to grab onto and that's what you want to develop, and that's what you want to apply to your work, and, uh, and, and you'll be happy and successful, I'm sure. Thank you very much.